All right, now we talk resolution. Resolution is a very tricky animal. Uh, this is how I like to handle it. I'll highlight all these meshes, and then I'll go into UV Texture Editor. I'll be able to see all the meshes here, and the problem is, is uh, they are all on top of each other. So one of the things I like to do is just take them and away from the 0 to 1 ratio in all directions so they do not overlap. This one could be over here. And this one should go about here and not overlap. So what I mean about overlap is I should be able to highlight all these in object mode and they don't overlap. In fact they do because I still have a couple of these little meshes hanging out like this dude, this guy, and this one. Okay. So again, put this one way over here. Put this one way over here and this one can stay the same because that's the only one left. All right, let's highlight everything and make sure nothing's overlapping. I can highlight to shell. I got this little guy hanging out. I don't know what his, his story is, so I'm just going to highlight his edge and hit move to sew. Ah, he's part of that guy. All right. There we go. So no lone wolves here. All right, now that these are all spread out, um, I can scale them individually and try to get the resolution the same on all these meshes. Okay, this is a very, very tricky thing. And what I have to do is look at the biggest mesh first. My biggest mesh in this case is this one right here. It's going to be the one that dictates how much resolution on all the other objects there are. In this case, it fits perfectly on the 0 to 1. Okay, so I, I can't change that. I have to bring all the other textures up to this one. Well, here's how you do this. First off, butt up the things next to each other. And we're going to get it to the point where these checkers flow from one object to the next. Okay, in this case, this one I have to downscale. I'll use W on the keyboard to move it up. Now it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. What I'm looking for is the fact that the squares are the same and right here you can see the white and the black. The black is actually bigger so I need to scale this down just a skosh and move it back up into position to check it. And this is a very important process. If, if you do not get this right, you'll end up doing a lot of extra work for no reason whatsoever. Okay, another thing is, look how square these are and how rectangular these are. So these need to be scaled a little bit this way also just to keep them the same. I'm using W a lot and I'm using scale a lot and I'm just kinda lining these up. I think that's good. That's good. Alright, so those two have the same resolution now. Alright, so this object right here Again, I'm buttoning it up against one that has been fixed already. In this case, these two might be a good good way to get that one. You notice I had to scale scale this one way down in order to get it.
and I have to do it uniformly. Okay, I see this one's been stretched a little bit too far now. And I'm going to fix that. So sometimes it helps to back off a little bit and then you can see the, the two squares. right about there. Again, I'm just checking next to the width of those. So what I'm looking here is this one and this one. That's about perfect. Okay. Yes, that'll do nicely. All right, as you can see, this is a very boring process to watch. I understand this. This one right here, you're never going to get perfect. So those OCD students, please do not try to do it perfect. Um, I'm not asking for perfect for this one. I'm just asking for the same size square. In that case, about right there, and then I'm going to leave it. That's why these pieces exist, because they're called separator pieces, and this whole system is called a parametric design. Uh, it allows the user to use these pieces over and over again to build not only one factory, but many others, too. Uh, in this case, this building kit can be used to create a whole city or just, you know, a few pieces of a city. The more pieces you get, the better your city looks. But we have to make sure if in a parametric design <laughs> that everything has the same amount of resolution or uh, pieces next to each other look kind of strange. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fix up these UVs in front of you, just like I'm doing. And then all the other ones, well, within reason, uh, the, the frames on the windows have to match, but not the glass panes. The glass panes are a different story altogether to be told in another day. Cool, that looks pretty good. Again, not looking to see these things go from square to square perfectly. I, I've had this, in, uh, sorry, I keep mentioning this, but I keep, ha I, I do have students that always think that, that I'm looking for the flow between the checkers going across. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking to see this one is the same size as this one, or this one the same size as this one. That's what I'm looking at. You'd be amazed at how many OCD kids are in game design. Highly OCD kids. Which is fine. It's good to be, you know, very structured. Okay. Again, I'm going to butt this one up. These could be a little tricky to scale. There we go. Perfect. And then the last one, again, this one's not going to be perfect because it's bent. If 
about right there. All right, perfect. All right, now we got to get them back to the zero one. without scaling. Now this is going to be the fun part because if we can't scale what happens if they get too big? Well they shouldn't because remember I, I dictated the biggest piece. So all these can be just plopped down on the 0 to 1 and those people that have done UVs in the past are like oh this is wrong, wrong because it, we have to take up all the space. Well remember these are smaller pieces so the set amount of resolution will be fine. Okay. When you go to put brick on these, you'll end up aligning them a little bit more perfect. Alright, so that is the brick. Alright, now the, I'll just ch I'll just do the harder ones in the next video and I'm going to have you guys do the rest of them independently.